Yo, guys, so I'm a beta male. I am not red pilled yet. Um, I've been hearing a lot about this book called The Rational Male by this guy named Rolo Tom Tomasi. And, um, you know, we talk a lot about red pill, blue pill stuff on this podcast. And I thought, listen, I want to get right to the source. And so the granddaddy of red pill of all that stuff. Let's just, why don't, can we dive in? Can we read it? Um, and I want to take it seriously because I know that the people that are really into this stuff, um, they don't want to see me just making ad hominem attacks, joking around, teasing, even if it's like, even if it's like, so obvious that they deserve the teasing. Maybe I'll do it a little bit just because I can't help myself, but I'm going to try to be like, I will be as serious. As, I, I'm going to want to take this seriously. All right. So the player's handbook already fucking shit. It's the biggest piece of shit title in the world. Um, player. So are you playing people? Oh, don't take it out of con. Don't use that word. Don't use the word, you dumb fuck. You take it out of context. <laughs> so you're playing people? Is that what you're doing? You don't, you're misinterpreting it. All right, anyway, let's move on. The Rational Mail, volume five. This guy writes a lot. What's up, Daniela? What's up, Ben? Okay, so let's look at the table of contents. Uh, average men and players, the players workshop already. Um, why are we talking about just men? It's weird to me that you don't include women. Every time I see advice that's just for women or just for men, it's super biased and weird. Social skills are universal. Okay. Self-help universal confidence, happiness, universal, um, rules of engagement, Brand management. Ooh, you got a brand? Game works. So wait, what's game? Are you playing a game? Maybe that's why he has problems. Maybe that's why people that play games have problems with dating. Stop playing games, dad. Stop playing games, bruh. Bruh. Game works. Game does not occur in a vacuum. It's just, so, I'm sorry, it's so fucking cheesy to call talking to people game. Game, let me hear your, let me see your game. <laughs> so fucking cheesy! Always default to game, game and sexual stamp, not just sex, male long term security, changing your programming. Uh, building a better beta. <laughs> game tactics, demonstrating higher value, learn to read. Assess your environment. See, that's good. Assess your environment's good. Assess your target. Are you going to murder someone? <laughs> Are you going to murder somebody? Target. What the fuck? Assess the social conditions. That's great. Very, very important. So I think there's going to be some stuff in here that I go, oh, yeah, I could agree with that. But... And the butt is usually going to be some weird, dark, biased, angry stuff that's like laced within self-help and social skills. Already it is. Player, game, all of this stuff. Like, listen, if nobody played these games, everyone would be fine. It's just everyone's playing a game. Stop doing it. Ben says he's stealing your shtick. It is cheesy. But, like, I'm purposely cheesy because it's funny. <laughs> Command presence. Um, amused mastery. Dominant blah, blah, blah. Okay. Mechanics of Kino. Kino as in just touching people. Casual Kino. Using Kino. Strategic Kino. Bread comes in conversation. Rewarding desired behavior. See, like, all of these things... They're just coming from a very manipulative standpoint. Like, reward 
desired behavior sounds like psychopathic talk. I just, I'm hoping that anybody that's watching this that isn't already a viewer of mine, somebody that's coming to this and going, oh, this guy, um, he's talking, he's reading this stuff and he's breaking it down. Like you could, you can see that it sounds psychopathic to say reward desired behavior. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Don't, don't, let's not, let's not. I'm going to try to think of the idiom. Let's not uh, split hairs here, okay? Um, the flow, the process, shit tests. Oh, shit tests, baby. This is all pickup artist stuff. Uh, no passing, reading the test, abundance mindset. Abundance mindset, great. That's, that's like a general self-help thing, though. Just, you know believe that you have all of the options blah blah it's all it's that's general self-help everybody knows that stuff art of the amog so this is more um pickup artist stuff amog stands for alpha male other guy and so what that means is when you're talking to a woman and there's another alpha male with her or in the room or whatever that wants to mess you up there are tricks the PUAs use to try to get the alpha male other guy to feel like a beta to you. Already really idiotic, stupid, fucking bullshit crap, just horrible. Uh, it's coming from a place of ego. Ego is a place of insecurity. Um, if you're just like a confident person, you're just chill with people. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just so hard to take this stuff seriously when it's just so basic. Like, if you're confident and you're a happy, positive person, like, alpha male other guy, I'll just, like, I don't know. Is he cool? I'll make friends with him. I'll talk to him. I don't give a shit. <laughs> All warfare is based on deception. Okay, is this a psychopath book? <laughs> All warfare is bit. I'm, I, I'm serious. I thought this was going to be more of a serious book. It's already silly as fuck, and I haven't even started reading it yet. The Boyfriend Destroyer. Utility of the beta males. The Zen game. Blah, blah, blah. Game in the rain. Peacocking. Okay. Jealousy. Make her jealous. Got it. So that's how relationships that are healthy actually start, right? You make the person jealous from the beginning and that sets the stage for a very trusting relation. No? Rolo Thomas Lelouch, no. Is that true? You could set the stage for a very strong trusting relationship when you make her jealous? I don't know. Somebody tell, I don't know. I'm a fucking beta, bro! Uh, sexual zoning, know your zones. I don't know. The creep. Over persistence. Yeah, don't be over persistent. That's good. Over sexualizing. Don't do that. The slow creep. Um, blah, 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 blah. This is a long book. Crisis of motive. Game maintenance. The talk. She's unhappy. Blue pill alphas. Dangerous white knights. These are such cheesy. Like, this is so cheesy. Ugh. God, I can't wait till the God pill comes out. <laughs> Dude, once everyone's God pilled, the red pill is going to be just so silly to everyone. The art of the neg. There's an art to it. In fact, hold on. Let me get my paintbrush and neg your ass. Ghosting friends, the price of truth. Deep conversation. Concepts and expectations, sexual mess, blah, blah, blah. Alpha widows, okay. Hypergamy, okay. All right, let's get started. Dedicated to a memory of Pat Campbell, the biggest psychopath of them all. Died too early. Okay. Okay, congratulations, you already have game. Why do I want, why do I want game? I don't want to play games. It's true. Odds are you already have some kind of idea of how to go from single, sexless, and lonely to hooking up, getting a girlfriend, and starting a family with your with a quality woman. That's true because that's what you're supposed to do, and you know how to do it the right way. That's true. You, my friend, already have a game. Have a game. The question is how effective is that game? Why does he talk like he's like 18? 
game. <laughs> You've probably been using game for some time now. <laughs> Sorry, it's so cheesy. You have a set of best practices in your head that you think will effectively get you a girlfriend, blah, blah, blah. This is just all, you know, it's all fluff. Ask a 10-year-old boy about how to go about getting a girlfriend and you'll see he's ready for your question. Odds are he was taught how to treat girls respectively by a single month. Okay, so let's get to the advice. Men's mating strategies have always been behavioral and mental contingencies adapted to work around women's mating strategies. Those strategies have always been adversarial. Each sex, sex seeks to solve its reproductive problem in as advantageous a way. See, I just don't agree with that. I don't agree that women's mating strategies are adversarial. Um, literally everyone I've ever dated Nobody has been adversarial to me. Is it possible that you you are only ending up with adversarial women and I'm not? But why would that be? Let me guess. Is it because you're trying to make her jealous? Is it because you're calling it a game? Is it caused because you're calling yourself a player at like 60? How old is Rolo Thomas Lolo? Let's see. Age. Does it say how? Oh, he's 53. So he's a player at 53, baby. Now, how does guy go from ordinary to extraordinary? in such chaotic times if everybody's just getting here this is the bible on red pill but how does a guy go from ordinary to extraordinary in such chaotic times men's mating strategies have always been okay we already read that in the past these desperate disparate strategies had to come to a mutual compromise for both sexes to cooperate in parental investment in children but for one sex strategy to prevail the others had to be compromised or abandoned from but like why is it a sex strategy why is there strategy? I like you. Do you like me? Oh, you like me? Good. That's it. Um, stress, sex, strategy. This is this. I mean, it already does sound like a war for him. Um, men progressively abandon their strategies game to align themselves with women's strategies in exchange for casual, no pregnancy sex. Traditional marriage used to be the formalization of this compromise of strategies, but today we live... Let's get to your... You're a very bad man for buying this book. It confirms that you don't trust the process that girl world approves of if you want to solve your reproductive problem, i.e. get laid. You're an evil man for thinking you can know women's nature. No, you're an evil man for thinking that you know women's nature, but... You're wrong about it. You're an evil man for thinking that women's nature is adversarial or their mating strategies. You're, that's why you're an evil man. Not because you know women's nature. Women's nature is the same as men's nature. Okay. You're in a good company, however. Statistics show that women are more attracted to bad men. This just already... See, this is the funny thing. Like, I thought I was going to get a book that was, like, super rational. But he literally just goes, research shows women are attracted to bad men. Do you know how many variables go into, like, like polling people? All of that type of stuff. Like... There are so many variables that go into that. One of which is what the fuck does a bad man mean? What are the parts of a bad man that a woman might be attracted to? Oh God, there's so many, there's so many parts of that. Anyway, uh, 
Ba 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 ba. It's it's one that the master pickup artist. Ooh, he's a master. Mystery conf- codified in 2002. You only get what you've gotten if you keep doing what you've done. Genius. You probably already know the definition of insanity. Blah 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 blah. Let's get to the stuff. Game, game. Holy trifecta of masculine self improvement. Make money, make muscles, learn game. It's too funny, though, because, again, I really thought I was going to get some rational stuff here, and it's really just the same basic shit I've been seeing on the all over the Internet. Money muscles game of the holy trifecta. That's so funny. Because the holy trifecta for God pilled is presence, purpose and health. Presence, purpose, health. This is because a formalized system of game takes the longest to learn, practice, and master. In the raw, okay, blah, 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 blah. Let's get to some stuff. Why it works book. This is not a step by step game, blah, blah, blah. How to read this book. Let's pass that. Daniela says, I don't want to speak for all women, but no women I know want to date a bad boy. All right, dude. This is this is why the book's 549 pages. It's so much fluff. Oh, I love this shit. This is like red pill stuff that they, they think is like so deep. <laughs> it's not very deep, dudes. Why do my eyes hurt? You've never used them before. Open your eyes to what's true, to what's real. All right, rules of engagement. Running game is just a cope, man. Only manipulative losers buy into that dating coach PUA stuff. True. Uh, Stop chasing women. Chase excellence, live your best life, go your own way, and the girls will come to you. Uh, Partly. Meh. Welcome to the churn. Most people don't realize it, but they're caught up in a churn. It didn't make up that term. A churn is marketing terminology for anything that keeps you in a constant cycle. Okay, I get it. Let's move on. In real life, dating used to be the test of social skills. You'd enter the sparring ring, get your ass handed to you more often than not. Again, social skills is not about fighting, buddy. Buddy, I... Already reading it, it's on the 30th page out of 549. And I literally am feeling bad for Rolo Thomas Lolo. I really feel bad for him because it's obvious that he gets into the sparring ring. Like he's fighting with women. He's it's a war to him. I just wish I could God pill him. I wish so badly I could God pill Rolo Thomas Lolo so he could stop writing this stuff. Uh, Dating in the 20th century was more about social skills than social perception. Okay, come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Successfully pairing people in healthy long-term relationships is a flawed business model for the online dating and personal branding. We spend so much time cultivating and fine-tuning. So yeah, that's true. Successful pairing people in healthy long-term relationships is a flawed business model for online dating. Online dating does not want you to get into a relationship. They don't get your money anymore. Um, that's true. Keeping people permanently single is an ideal, but ultimately untenable state. Why though? Why? I'm just confused why everyone needs to be married with kids. Why? Why can't you just be single for the rest of your life? Why? He's coming from a conservative place. He's coming from re- like a religious values of get married, have kids. She she uh, submits to the man, all that. It's just more conservative stuff. Sorry, the siren's going off. As an elite player, come on. Does anybody really take this seriously? You have to understand the realities of game you're playing and the psychology of other Players, more importantly, accept that your brand of you is competing with countless other brands. Why? Why do I give a shit 
of competing. I'm not competing against anybody. I don't care. I don't, this is just not important to me. It's all, it's all this war. You're competing, you're fighting, you're sparring. I mean, I guess I'm just a very chill guy that doesn't think about this stuff. So it doesn't affect me. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Churn. Ignorant red pill critics don't understand that guys learning game aren't just learning a couple of lines to get laid. They're doing complete overhauls of their psychology, beliefs, mindsets, behaviors. Yeah, but like, do you see what you're doing? Like you're going, oh, learning game. Like red pill critics don't like red pill because they don't know that you go and overhaul your beliefs, mindsets, and behaviors. That's not why. Come on, Rolo. You really think... I know you don't think that's why. It's because it's fucking unhealthy, manipulative shit, buddy. And it's manip... Like, you're not ma just manip having men manipulate women. You are manipulating men. All of this war, player, game, fight, spar, challenge... All of these words, like that's not healthy for people to get into relationships th this way. Make her jealous. Come on, dude. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, come on. Fluffy, fluff, fluff. Okay, so it's just, yeah, I get it. Saying, like, shed who you were to become whatever. Game works. Listening to myself in an old interview, I remember having an idea during the conversation towards the middle of it. I thought about the benefits of what we now call a game. Maybe consider how game has progressed to what it is today. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Blah, blah. It's really, this is so much fluff. Red pill is the theory. Game is the practice. Okay, are we gonna get to stuff? Like actual stuff? Game does not occur in the vacuum. All right, doing something. Got it. Game teaches bad social skills. Okay. Stop, this whole game, it's just cringe as fuck. Always default to game. Should I use game on the woman in the office? Should I feel bad? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Knowing about your rival. See, again, Robert Greene, psychopath. 48 Laws of Power, psychopath book. And no wonder that he's quoting it. Knowing about your rival is critical. So he's like, are women your rival? I can't. I can't, buddy. You're misinterpreting it. It's out of context. I'm literally reading the book. Inexperienced blue pill men think that being good at game requires some endless ability to micromanage every aspect of their interactions. No, that's not what people think. When you think game is some act you put on, it becomes a kind of cognitive fencing match. You've been talking about a cognitive fencing match this whole time. So, uh, okay, come on. You're not really getting to the actual meat and potatoes. God. Yeah, Artem says, don't chase women, focus on yourself. Also, red pill literally just focusing on women and female nature. <laughs> um, okay, it's just lots of fluff. God, the first hundred pages probably. Building a better beta and others, risk concerns, the proponents of a femme-centric culture, the rest... Fem-centric culture? Why is it a fem-centric? I don't think it's a fem-centric culture. Self-affirming echo chambers are free of risk to their career or reputations. Despite that, the utility of exploiting game in theory to serve a female purpose hasn't gone unnoticed. This has given the rise to what might be called sanitized game. They take the primary elements of red pill praxeology. Ooh, that's a word I don't know. Let's see. Praxeology. Where did he learn this one? No results. <laughs> no results found. 
Wait. Why did it do that? Praxeology. There we go. Study of human action and conduct. <laughs> Just say that. The game tenants that promote an acceptable masculine responsibility and then blend them into program a build a better beta than a lot of these men. Market coaches, moralist trads, and red pill women on money. Today's social undercurrent for men to man up makes reinterpreting red pill games serve the expectations and entitlements of women. We get game concepts co-opted by life coaches, social conservatives, female manosphere influencers, and red pill women. Most of the is the message they're fronting, the point is to create a more acceptable man for a female defined goal. Like, I just feel like all of this, like, women control everything. Like, I don't feel like that. That's just not the way I've seen life. Like, why is it that you feel like this? Okay. Bitter beta. Listen to the mainstream celebrity like Steve Harvey, blah, blah, blah. There's no feminine opposite to this. There's no kind of... All right, I get it. He's just saying that, like... All right, so 85... Okay, finally, we got some tactics, baby. Demonstrate higher value. Okay, so this is just a very basic pickup artist thing. It's just basically like show the person that you're better than them. Show the person how fucking great and amazing you are. Okay, which is not necessary, by the way. In attraction, happiness, confidence, connect, chemistry, connection, getting, having sex, whatever. You don't have to demonstrate higher value. You don't. You just don't. No man has ever reasoned a woman into bed, but average men have tried to do just that over millennia. Romance via reason is the primary plot device on all the best romantic. I got it. Okay. Intelligent, average young man usually defaults to deductive reasoning when qualifying himself to young women. Uh, I don't get it, man. How can Claire not see that I'm the perfect boyfriend? I'm a good listener. I'm sensitive, vulnerable, emotionally available. I've got a great job waiting for me once I'm done with the med school. My folks love her too. I tell her this all the time, but she keeps fucking that jerk who treats her like shit. I would never do the stuff he does. I respect her. She says I'm a great friend and I'll make the right girl real happy someday. Yeah, this is like the whole place where like all red pill kids start. Most women couldn't tell you or won't tell you that they are attracted to one man over another while they're in the middle of that selection process. But why are you saying women? This is everybody. Vi vibe. Short for vibration. <laughs> okay. Okay, D display higher value, got it, got it. Is a story or an action conducted by a man to make himself appear or convey himself as a person of high status, therefore making himself more desirable. So this is not true. This is actually incredibly false. Uh, women don't get attracted to high status. The... Nobody does. You don't get turned on by that. You just don't. Uh, you can get people interested in you and paying attention to you, but not attracted to you. Hints of information that convey pre-selection, domain mastery. See, he's, he's basically just ripping off mystery method here. Mystery method talks about uh, demonstrating higher value, but he does so in um, a more complex way. Um, good DHV should effortlessly establish in a woman's mind that you're a man who other men, who other men want to be and other women want to fuck. This is not true. Uh, maybe shallow people care about this. In fact, I won't say maybe, I will say yes. Shallow people care about this, but most people don't care about this. Um, but again, Rolo cares about shallow people because he is a shallow person.
I love that he his writing is so like um it's very textbook. Pre-selection is the dynamic women use from third-party confirmation to determine a man's value. In other words, he's just saying uh be a man that other men want and other women want to fuck. That's all he's saying. You don't have to say it in all smart words to just get the point across. If other women want him, he is pre-selected. This aids in women's evaluation of intention. Attention. Does not matter. However, the perception of pre-selection is also a dynamic that a skilled player can create. Again, so this is lying. Create the illusion. A game tactic that demonstrates. So yeah. So basically he says, keep up an illusion with somebody so they could become attracted to you. Even though this illusion does not make people attracted to you. Um, he was just reading something that Mystery Method said, and he said, I like that. I'm going to copy that in my book. There's no basis for this. Domain mastery and social dominance qualities are demonstrated through high levels of confidence and authority. It's just saying the same stuff over again. Don't forget this. Strategies like Cocky and Funny. So Cocky and Funny was um, another very early pickup artist method. And it's basically just saying be cocky and funny. <laughs> that was the whole thing. And he made this guy made millions off of it. So cheesy stuff. Um, or Amused Mastery. A form more fluid if you have the mastery. Blah, 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 blah. Often a good solid direct opener will demonstrate higher value because it displays attractive behaviors like confidence, humor, and social intelligence just in your willingness to approach. So his advice here is just say, go up to somebody and just like say hi. <laughs> in conversation, DHV implants specific spikes. And this is all pickup. This is just pickup artist stuff. This is not anything original. He's ripping off pickup artists. Have a known status. This used to be reserved for accomplished people with a degree of fame, such as rock stars, actors, or athletes, or as society inherently recognizes their high value. Overt explanations of your value sound like boasting and try hard flexing. Um, unless your cocky arrogance is backed up by verifiable, authentic. Uh, I'm so bored. He's just overly wordy. When a woman meets a man who demonstrates his unplugging from the blue pill social programming about treating her with special attention like a princess or clingy needy behavior, that man becomes intriguing. So, okay. So what he's saying right here is don't be needy because being needy is unattractive. That's all. If you're not needy, you're just, that's just neutral, really. Just don't be needy. The reason why is when you're needy, you're saying, I need someone to be happy. Uh, if somebody sees that in you, they go, that's a big responsibility for me because I have my own responsibility to be happy. And now I have the responsibility to make you happy. People don't want that. They also go, oh, your life's probably not very good if you're not happy, if you need me to make you happy. It's all very simple stuff, but like, just say, don't be needy. Um, a woman is intrigued by you that she will incrementally adopt your frame. This is all just, just, just making stuff up. A uh, woman rather play the game than have the game explained to them. Uh, women don't play games unless you meet somebody that specifically likes playing games. That's different. Don't explain your value. Show it through behavior. All pickup artist stuff. This is all mystery method basics. Learn to read. Game is shorthand for applied understanding of social cues, environments, and intersexual dynamics. Okay. But before you could use game, you must be a reasonable observer. Uh, you must learn to read people, places, and circumstances. This is all good. But this is normal social skills. This is like what you should learn when you were like three. Mm. 
So guys who suffer from approach anxiety would find a playing game much easier if they had an accurate read of the woman's personality they want to interact with. Think of the read as game reconnaissance. So, I mean, it's kind of right, but it's also, it's still manipulative. So it's saying like, if you know what she wants, in fact, it's very unread pill too. He's basically saying a read of the woman's personality they want to interact with. So you're basically saying, if you know what her personality is like, you could cater to that. Please correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but that's what it sounds like, which sounds, by his definition, blue-pilled. Aspiring players tend to read up on techniques, learn a few scripts from a guru. Okay, got it, got it, buddy. I get it. You're saying, people don't understand how deep red pill is. Uh, separate, blah, 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 calibration, assess the environment. Good, assess the environment. Assess your target before you kill them. Once you've established a good read of the environment, let's assume you find an attractive target. This is, uh, again, pick up artist language. The step where things get subjective. What a hot girl looks like to the one guy is another guy's fat chick. Um, that's true. And that's why, yeah. Like, that's the other thing about Red Pill. I mean, he's, I feel like he's contradicting himself. Um... Attraction is subjective. Assessing a girl is often an obstacle for guys who are fearful of running game. Three second rule. Three second rule, it's literally, literally just mystery method. Uh, thinking that you're too cool for any girl who wouldn't approach you first is coping because even if you were so hot that women opened you, you'd still have to know the social skills game women expect from a man who's so hot that they'd open him. Damn, he overthinks this shit. It's too much. Um, but he is right. Thinking that you're too cool is really just, you're really just insecure and you don't, you're scared to talk to people. Okay. Yeah, I mean, this is... People talk about this all the time. This is, like, nothing new. The whole 55% is body language, blah, blah, blah. Read her appearance. What is she wearing? Is she wearing business casual or made up in a short red dress? Have you, lady? <laughs> I need to die. I need to die. Is anybody dying? Can't take it. It's too funny. Like, such a simplification of women. If she's wearing a short red dress, ovulating. Ovulating. It's simple. It's very rational. Estimate her age and edu education level. This is so fucking American psycho. It's insane. Yes, read the environment, but like literally do the opposite of judging her. And what you're doing, estimate her age and ed education level. So here's the good part about this book. He is saying assess social conditions, read the person. All of that stuff is very good. But, and like I said, I would say this, I, s I said this at the beginning, I would say, but, but not in this way. <laughs> Not like this. Not by like saying, oh, oh, is she ovulating? Is she wearing a red dress? Is she like this? Is she like that? Now I know how to interact with her. This is, to me, blue pill. If you're really talking about it, this is blue pill as fuck. All of this will help you apply your game more directly. Yeah, this is blue pill as fuck. You're just catering to what you think that person wants. Correct me if I'm wrong. Anybody in the chat, correct me if I'm wrong. Is that not what he's saying? Many guys argue that it takes too much effort to be that analytical, but you'll become sensitive to this reading ability and it'll become sexual nature with practice. I want you to do the opposite. I want you to go up to a person and have no judgment of them whatsoever. But, yes, be reading them constantly. Read their emotions. Read their how they're interacting with you. Read their micro expressions. But that's simply to have a better interaction with them. Uh, but don't judge 
all of their things about them and then say, now I know how to interact with you. Varys says, serious question, how can women who receive endless validation on social media and dating apps feel lonely? That's such a good question because because they know that that validation isn't real. They know that that validation is coming from somebody that's insecure, that doesn't truly know who that person is really and is just seeing Right. So like, say, for instance, I had like a woman that was a subscriber of mine and she like became obsessed with me and she became uh, like she just became convinced that I was like the best human in the entire world. I wouldn't feel great about that. I would just go like she obviously doesn't know me. She doesn't know who I am. Uh, that's the reason why it's because there's a difference between the facade that somebody is attracted to and the um, real connection that you have with somebody. Also, a lot of people that are um, influencers and Instagram models and all that type of stuff, they generally can be. Um, more insecure people in general. Not all the time. That's not like a equaling something, but you know, it could happen. Raul says that's skipping the first step of your social course, which is to talk to everyone as an equal, which I can say works. Raul, when did you become a member? Raul's a member, y'all. Daniela says, going to go out on a limb and say some women seek validation because they're lonely and it's a quick dopamine hit that fades super quick. That's great. I agree with you, Daniela. All right. Uh, okay. You need to be accurate enough to know what tools in your game toolbox to use with that woman to get you the attraction phase and interact with her. This is like loser shit. I... I'm very surprised that he's saying really loserish shit. Um, like, <laughs> you really think that to attract somebody, I'm going to walk into a fucking room and go, okay, uh, what is she wearing? What time is it? What's the environment? How is she acting? What is she doing? What does she look like? Is she very blob like this or is she like this? Oh, now I'm going to give her this and this. That's like such fucking loser shit, dude. God damn it. I thought it was going to be cool. All right, we're a hundred pages in. We're a fifth way through this. Command presence. Hold on. I'm just getting tired of this book. Um, presence is great. That's what I talk about in my book, but I don't know if it's the same presence. I think it's completely different. A few years ago, I went to a popular bikini bar for a mixture event that one of our agencies threw for my company. It was an upscale bar with an affluent clientele. All the waitresses were easily eights and nines. Wait a second. I thought you said attraction was subjective and that what somebody found is attractive, somebody else could find ugly. So now why are you saying eights and nines? The bartenders looked as if they got the job based on how they closed the res close, on how close they resembled Italian models. If you know any about Central Florida and the sordid details of Tiger Woods affairs, this was one of his primary spots for a hookup. Okay. Whenever I'm in a professional social outing, I pay attention to social dynamics, take mental notes. I'm always in behavioral observation mode, uh, which is very bad to do because what you're doing is you're comparing. And anytime you're comparing, you're comparing yourself as well. This is where low self-esteem comes in and low confidence comes in. This is likely why he wears glasses, sunglasses inside. Um, usually insecure people do that. Whenever I'm a professional, blah, blah. The time I'd be studying what's called command presence. You'll know this term if you work in law enforcement and we're doing all that. When a cop stops you for speeding ticket, he's trained to adopt command presence when approaching your car instinctively. People tend to think of cops as generally egotistical or alien, but it's this presence that leads them to a presumption. There are hundreds of articles on Google search command presence. The old saying, I can't explain what it is, but I know when I see it applies when we speak of command presence. It's something we instinctually sense. Crit 
Critics will argue that command presence is something a person is born with. You either have it or you don't, like a blah, blah, blah. However, uh, athletic ability... The athletic ability to fade with age, whereas command presence will mature over time. Command presence is one of the few game techniques I've uh, On this occasion, I decided to experiment with command presence rather than wear my usual club crawler attire. I wore a well-tailored suit with some expensive dress shoes. So see, what he's doing is he's going, I feel less than the people in this room by wearing what I like to wear, which is, by the way, usual club crawler attire. Okay, And he says, I need to feel more confident in myself. And I need people to think that I am more important than I am. So I want to wear a well-tailored suit with expensive dress shoes. <laughs> Suddenly, I feel better than everyone else. This comparison thing is never going to end because there's always going to be somebody better than you in your ego, which is why you need to just remove all of it, remove all of the comparisons, remove all of the judgments, take it all away and just see the person as a human soul. This is God pill that I'm talking about, which is coming out soon, bitches. I never wear a tie. Even at work, I've always felt a good's physique is the best form of peacocking, and this met with a lot of success in my past. Still a man in a well-tailored suit. Projects a different presence and prompts different blah, blah, blah. I mean, this is just stupid shit, right? Like, like I could walk, like this is like a $10 t-shirt I got from like H&M or somewhere. I could go anywhere and I could be present and command presence. Why? Like, I literally thought I was going to be challenged with, like, very, very smart stuff in this book. And he literally just says, wear expensive clothes. Literally. Again, comments, live chat. Am I taking it out of context? He just said, wear expensive clothes to get people to like you. Yo, he just called a woman an exquisite brunette. <laughs> Sounds like he wants to eat her or something. HB9. This is all pickup artist stuff. He's really pickup artisty. Kino walks. Kino is just like touches me. Also, like, something that's really cheesy about this whole, like, wearing a suit, it's like, it's just, like, ca catering to society standards. Again, it's, like, very blue-pilled of him. I really was expecting more smart shit here. It's just a lot of, like, blue-pill stuff. Dress really nice! That's, like, what my mom tells me to do. And I'm like, no, mom! I want to do what I want to do, mom! So right now he's just like, he's just kind of like showing off that he wore a suit and people liked him. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Game Maxim. Women want to get with a man who other women want to bang and other women, men want to be. Not true. Just not true. Um... Attraction just doesn't work like that. Why? Because I never show that type of stuff when I'm meeting people and dating people and hooking up with people. I never 
show that women want me. I never show that men want to be me. I don't care about that. That's very loserish to think like just insecure stuff. I don't care. I just don't. I literally don't care about showing off. DHV demonstrating higher value. It's literally just showing off. <laughs> It's so rational. Here's the rational male. Show off. <laughs> That's it. Don't say DHV like it's some science shit. It's just showing off. <laughs> oh, God. I really thought I was going to get some stuff here. It's, it's just basic, really like basic person philosophy pickup art it's stealing pickup artist stuff um Remember, it is in women's evolutionary best interest to sort the possible alphas from the confirmed betas as efficiently as possible. In our ancestral past, a woman's sexual selection was a matter of life or death. Uh, to affect this, she must assess the honest signals from the fake ones. So, um, I would love to see some like scientific papers that tell me that this is true. Because this just sounds like armchair psychology it just sounds like armchair evolutionary psychology like did you where did you get this did you read some scientific article that says that like women have cavemen brains and they are looking to be not killed when they are dating somebody like in other words protected by their man that's like what they care about Wait, wait, wait. Did he just... On some level of consciousness, women instinctively understand that their sexuality, their only real agency with men, is perishable? Did he just say that women... That women's sexuality is their only real agency with men? Oh, um, I'm looking in the chat right now and, um, hold on, let me pull it up. Uh, philosophical will says a PUA called John Anthony did a reaction to you. LOL. Yeah. I saw somebody commented on one of my videos that I watched his video. He didn't really say anything. Actually, we could get that to that. Maybe like, um, on Thursday, he didn't like, I was expecting him to like really break down everything I was saying. He didn't. He was more just talking about the video that I was reacting to because I was reacting to like really cheesy pickup artists and he was talking about them. And then he was like saying like ad, ad hominem attacks like, yeah, this guy's annoying or something like that. He wasn't really responding to anything. And if he did respond to something, it really didn't. He didn't really like back it up with facts and stuff. It was just like opinion type stuff i was really expecting a lot more from the video um half the video he was selling his like coaching program too not to say that like you shouldn't sell your stuff i do too but like it's like half it was like half the video um so yeah i wasn't really like i was kind of disappointed i was expecting more This par this like this whole paragraph right here is like wicked. It's like evil shit. Men's criteria for sexual selection, youth, beauty, sexuality, and availability. That's literally it, dude. God, you are the most shallow fuck I've ever seen in my goddamn life. Um this creates subliminal urgency in is he a doctor? Like, is he a psychologist? Can somebody tell me? Because he's he's saying like very big sh things with no basis. 
to back it up. This creates subliminal urgency in women. It predisposes them to a kind of ruthless duplicity in the sexual marketplace. But remember, it's cruelty based on perceptions. A frame, a guy who looks sharp, acts sharp, and is sharp has an advantage over the guy who dresses sloppy and isn't all that confident about his status. I dress sloppy and I'm not all that confident about my status. I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit. But why is it that I could be with people that I want to be with? Can anybody break that down? Because that's where I'm confused here. Okay. Be professional at all times. Take yourself seriously more than not. Like worst advice in the world. <laughs> you you will not bore somebody more than by taking yourself seriously. Self-deprecation applied too overtly. See, I I just think that like um he just I think he thinks too much. I think that might be it. I think he just is an overthinker. But that doesn't mean that you're th being an overthinker means you're right in your thinking. It just means that you think too much. A lot of overthinkers think in circles here. Uh, that's why he says self-deprecation applied too overtly too often and too soon will result in triggering her beta detection intuition. No, it won't. No, it won't. Ah, oh, man, I feel really sad because I really was expecting some rational stuff, but like it's very, he's one, he's just literally ripping off all pickup artist stuff, especially mystery. And then two, he's coming from very little experience and then going, oh yeah, that's it. It's the self-deprecation. Good posture is essential. No, it's not. It's just not. I have bad posture. Uh, always make and maintain eye contact when speaking to her. That is good, but not for the reason that he thinks. <laughs> Direct eye contact is one of the hardest things for most guys to maintain today. No, it's not. It's like the easiest thing. Just look at the person. It's hard when you see somebody as a challenge. So again, everything that he says is coming from a place that people are better than you this is a challenge. You have to fight for it. If you removed all that and you just saw this as another human soul who is sharing the human experience with you, it's so, so easy to look at them because you are looking at essentially you. That's easy to do. So this is just a headspace shift rather than trying. So basically what Red Pill is, is he's saying, I am agreeing with all of um, the society's like marketing that it's put played on me and I am trying to uh, counter it with stuff that I think fights it and 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 um, like wins against it where in reality uh, the easiest way to connect with people to attract people is just to rem is to literally just not play in um, the way that society market it markets dating just don't even just like literally step aside from it. Treat people completely differently. He's saying play within those waters and do it this way to beat them, which is just a lot more difficult, stressful. And also it just doesn't work, which is why uh, you don't meet many red pilled guys that are very happy and in happy relationships and dating people that they like. Raul says, I'm in the same boat as you, Anthony. Go dancing, not dressed as well as everybody else. And he's the one that gets asked out all the time. Varys says, um, oh, sorry. I forgot to move it back to the book, by the way. That's because I'm an idiot. But 
Uh, Vera says, I am good at eye contact when listening, not when talking. Uh, I noticed that at my interview this morning. Um, so Varys, that's actually a great point. Um, usually when we talk, we are thinking about stuff. So we naturally are going up and thinking. And when we're listening, we're actually we're focused on the person. So it is a practice to be able to express yourself while you're looking at that person. It's more of just a habit. Just get good at that habit. It's a matter of respect towards the person. Yeah, congrats on getting hired, by the way, Varys. Play with her and play with her. <laughs> Treat her like a bratty sister, but imply amusement. So, again, he's saying, like, like kind of be mean to her. <laughs> Man, this is really bad. I was expecting so much more. Meek and weak, you can expect that to color your future interactions. Yeah, I mean, yeah, first impressions are everything. It is impossible to correct a first impression in the social media age. Eh, I don't know what we're talking about here anymore. Back to the situational awareness. Size up every woman. Don't do that because you're doing a comparing game. You can never win the comparing game. Women are hotter, smarter, cooler than you. You're a fucking loser. Don't compare yourself. I'm talking to Rolo, by the way. Um, and his cronies, the fresh and fit gay. <laughs> they do it to you. You must be just as cons discerning. Do you see what he's doing? He's saying, they do it to you. You got to do it back. What I'm saying is literally just sidestep everything and see them completely differently. Come at them as just a soul. Not a person, not their status, not anything about them societally. Come at them as a soul who is sharing the same human experience you are. When you remove all that, they will remove it too. But he's never gotten to that point. So all he can say is, and I got to bring it back. All he could say is they do it to you. You must be just as discerning because he's never passed that point. So he doesn't know what it's like to pass that point. Stay one step ahead of her. See, it's always a game. It's war. Accurate read of a woman will save you a lot of wasted effort. That's good, but not in the way that he says it. <laughs> Observe, orient, decide, and act. Uh, it's a little too analytical. You're going to be thinking too much in an interaction. I'd rather you not think. Effective command presence, leave no doubt who's in charge even without speaking a word. Uh, this is horrible. It's so basic and surface level. There's nothing deep about this or really anything. Um, yeah. Amused mastery. Guys get hung up on the term aloof. The word conjures the, conjures the idea of a guy who pretends to be looking down his nose at some girls he's mildly interested in as a lame effort to get her to qualify him. Good. Good, Rolo. Yeah, don't be aloof. While qualification is a crucial element to good game, when you read how a guy needs to be the perfect being. So, yeah, qualification is a crucial element to good relationships, but not in the way that he thinks it is. There's a difference between arrogant aloofness and a confident and amused mastery. Sure. Great. Amused mastery puts you in a position of maturity while remaining playfully approachable. Sure. Yeah. This sounds nice. This, uh, this attitude positions a woman to qualify you by acknowledging your mastery of... <laughs> her. I want to fucking break this. <laughs> Acknowledging your mastery of her. I'm sorry. 
It's too good. It's too good. Oh, God. This is a lot of um, surface level advice. There's really not a lot of deep stuff here. You've seen it all before. You just get it. This is like really not deep stuff. In my mastery over my daughter. Ugh. I also noticed that my wife finds amused mastery just as appealing to the point that she includes herself in my mastery over my daughter. Does somebody, somebody in the ch live chat, can you, do you know what he's talking about? Does anybody know what he's talking about? Ugh. Ugh. Fuck. I like, I like really feel ashamed of reading this book. <laughs> Even as research. It's, ben says, "This is a is this a self report?" <laughs> uh, okay, all right. He's not really explaining it. He's just saying he just gets it. Dominance. Another term that gets abused in most manosphere in the girl world is dominance. It conjures up wrong preconceptions because it carries the same negative connotation as the word power. Women will rarely admit that wanting a dominant man or a masculine influence in their life because dominant seems binary and absolutely elute. absolute. Gynocentric. Is that like something to do with um, gynecologist? Let's look it up. Um, oh, wait. Hold on. Search with Google. Gynocentric. Centered on or concerned exclusively with women. <laughs> oh, so it really does have something similar to gynecologist. Taking a female or a feminist point of view. Gynocentric. That's so great. Equalism tells women that the other must necessarily be submissive if one partner is dominant. Uh, the impression of being dominant conflicts with idealistic egalitarianism. All romantic relationship marriages should be a partnership of equals after having been fed on a steady diet of independent woman tropes for the better part of a century. <laughs> he does. I don't think he likes women. <laughs> or at least women being like people. <laughs> to admit to desiring a dominant man is to accept dependency on him. To this mindset, dominance is viewed as synonymous with aggression and oppression. And women and feminized men, feminized men, have a Pavlovian response at even the mention of dominance or submission. On the red pill side, we look at the truth of women's need for dominance and men. We eventually see women's desire for dominance in their behaviors, popular fiction, and the Latin meaning of their words. Green Maxim, treat her like a celebrity and she will treat you like a fan. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, don't idolize somebody. That's, that's good advice. Don't idolize anybody. Uh, but he is idolizing people. He's going HB9, eights and sevens and eights. Like, that's, you are literally treating women like celebrities. These hot, hotties, exquisite. <laughs> Power hierarchies are an inherent part of human nature. Human beings will innately default to the appearance of power, uh, of power in others in an age when women, okay. But he is, he is assuming wrongfully that power and um, submitting to a powerful person equates to attraction. And it just doesn't. They're two different things. But I understand why Red Pill Pickup Artists talk about this. Because they came from a place of no power so they think that having power is the answer. Okay. But he, he's not yet explained what dominance is because he's only explained what dominance isn't. 
Social dominance indicates an alpha status, but it goes beyond this. You just know what dominant looks like, right? Is that what he's going to say? Ideally, guys imagine dominance as having his woman present while he's issuing or orders to his underlings as some form of social proof. Then she'll want to fuck him that much harder for it. This social dominance is just a half measure guys are comfortable with and not offending women. It's not the authority of dominance a woman generally needs to respect a man. Instead, it's performative third party dominance over others. Usually friends or employees are a particular sphere of influence. Social dominance, while necessary, shouldn't be a substitute for being authoritatively dominant with a woman. Guys comfortable commanding respect among peers are often hesitant to be dominant with and command presidents from their own uh, pres uh, command respect from their own woman. Uh, so all he's saying is like, don't be dominant directly, be dominant indirectly by like having guys do shit for him. <laughs> This is usually because they internalize the gynocentric equalism ideal. Thus relying on... What's in my throat? Thus relying on social dominance sounds like virtue. It's what real man does while carefully not stepping on the toes of the equal partnership meme. Oh. But women do need direct male dominance to genuinely respect, love, and desire a man. Oh, so he is saying that it, it's kind of jumping all over the place. She must admire you. A woman cannot look up to a man who is her equal. That's just not true. Hypergamy never seeks its own level. Uh, pragmatically, it always looks up. When 50 th Shades of Grey became... See, this is all ego stuff. Like, this is for some people. But for... For the vast majority of people, they don't care about this stuff. This is for more shallow people. It's for more people that um, I guess are very insecure and care about this type of stuff. But for normal people, they do not care about this at all. And this is that's the majority. So you display dominance in your speech, even in your silence, the way you dress, the status implied in your career, your attitude towards people on either end of that status spectrum, your tolerance and tolerance. Yes, I know that. Like, this is very vague and basic. I need more specifics, Rolo Thomas Lolo. As men, we tend to think that more overt our displays are, the more women will take notice, but women are far more sensitive to the nuance of, yeah, 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 blah, blah, blah. That said, he said this mil million times. That said, knowing that women require dominance from men is in no way less to be overbearing, oppressive, or abusive. Oh, how nice of you, Rolo! Leverage that knowledge to your best effect and that you have a, okay. But he didn't, he has not explained what dominance means. He's only explained what it's not. And if he has explained, it's been very small. Women don't like being made aware of their attraction to overt dominance. <laughs> I, I just love how he just comes up with these psychological things, rules, facts that he has in his brain that aren't facts. They're not researched. And he just makes them up. Uh, it's when dread is covert that they respond most favorably. Women love to be objectified, dominated, and adored, but only by worthy men who know better than to remind her of it. Women would rather be objectified than idealized. I'd like to think about that more. But again, I mean, like, he just... He just is like throwing this shit out willy nilly. I uh, just, I mean, I, uh, there's so, there's so much stuff that he's throwing out willy nilly that like, I'd have to, I'd have to really like research everything that he's saying. Um, because it goes against all of my experience, all of, uh, everybody that I know's experience, everybody that I've successfully coached experience. Um, so it's really hitting a wall with me here. Women's egos are overblown on an industrial scale in the modern world. Really? Are they? Because I don't see that. Who are these women that he's meeting? Maybe he's just meeting people. Like, 
here, let me let me put it this way. Rolo Tomasa. Rolo, is it possible that you just like meeting people with overblown egos? And I just want to ask you, come on. You know, you know that uh, Myron Gaines, you know he has an overblown ego. You know that, right? I think you just like hanging out with people with overblown egos. I think that's just it. Because I don't meet women with overblown egos. Ever. Let's check out the chat. I'm like blown away how bad this book is. It's fucking horrible. It's like so basic. It's so superficial. So manipulative. So wrong. So insecure. So blue pilled too. It's not even red pill. I thought it was going to be super red pill. Anthony, uh, Ben says, Anthony getting big mad. <laughs> uh, Danny says, I feel you, I'm clueless. Kat says, he's pretending to pay attention to his daughter to show that he has mastered her. <laughs> and Daniela threw up at that. It means women-focused society. I mean, unless she's into that in, into that in the bedroom, this seems silly. Yes, femosphere. Like, I, I'm sorry, but, like, I, I don't see... This is... Like, what I am seeing is women finally getting rights. <laughs> but, like, that doesn't mean that they're taking over. Big egos recognize big egos. Uh, question. I've met many women that have had one failed relationship after another... Uh, for the guy being a jerk, do you believe that they might all be because of red pill? No. Um, listen, everybody's perspectives and perceptions after a bad breakup, you know, it takes two to tango, right? And so there could be things that happened in the relationship that you don't know about. But when it when it gets minimized to, oh, he was a jerk. He was just an asshole. And that's why we broke up. There's likely more to it than that. Uh, ben says, I don't know how mainstream red pill is where a random guy is into it. It's 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 pretty mainstream by now. Daniel says, wait, are they all saying it's the guy being a jerk? At some point, it can't always be the guy. Yeah, exactly. Uh, women's egos are overblown. Social media has made a science of super empowering women's sense of self. They are both Captain Marvel and historical victims of patriarchal oppression at the same time. What? What? What is like he is it's at the point now where I think it's like word salad. Like it's at the point now where I think it's babbling. A science of super empowering women's sense of self. You do realize that like 95% of Marvel is men. We're just trying to f we're just trying to fit some women into superhero roles. And you got to fucking call them out like way too hard, buddy. This social cognitive dissonance leads This is a woman hating book. Like it's clear now. I mean, again, I wanted to read this t I literally wanted to read this book to give Red Pill the benefit of the doubt. L genuinely. Genuinely wanted to. But it is, it's just, it's really bad. Like, this is loser talk. Women are super empowering them. Don't you like women being empowered? <laughs> like, I love, I like women. I want them to feel empowered. I want them to feel great about themselves. I want them to be independent. Like, I like, <laughs> like, I like, I like when people that I like are doing well. <laughs> I feel like everything I'm saying is just so, <laughs> like, it's obvious, right? 
being objectified by a worthy he keeps bringing that up being objectified by a worthy alpha man is far more gratifying than the self sap self abasing idealization of a beta man but the thing is is like he he's very um he knows what he's doing he like the sentences like this right here oh sorry i i have to bring it back okay so being objectified by a worthy alpha man is far more gratifying than the self-abasing idealization of beta men so he knows what he's doing here this is not an accidental sentence this is not unconscious um self-reporting he is looking to manipulate men and he's trying to get men to objectify women women will say they want a man who respects them but default respect for women is cheap from average men he is this is dark shit this is like very manipulative shit to like for boys oh man now i know why like boys are saying dumbass shit on tiktok all day long this is like very manipulative like it's so he's he's very good at twisting things and like m doing an either or high value men don't respect women they objectify now we got to the good stuff he gave he made us wait 117 pages but damn we are in the good we are deep in it now boy he didn't want to say this shit at the beginning he wanted to wait until all of the haters left holy shit i'm kind of at a loss for words Like, I'm trying to think about how he truly actually thinks that's true. The only answer that I have is that he's, he's like, he's sad and he's insecure. I just feel bad for him. Like, I really do feel bad for Rolo. Like, I could tell that he, he does not experience, like, he's not. I could tell he's not a happy guy. Um, I feel bad for him. This is really sad stuff. Wow. Wow. Can we stop here? I've been going on for an hour and 22 minutes. <whistles> Ooh. If you guys liked this episode... Um, here, let's, let's, does anybody in the Zoom? Oh, Ben's in the Zoom. I'm going to bring in Ben. I don't think I've met Ben before, or maybe I have. What up, Dad? What up, Dad? What up, Ben? Ben! Ben? Hold on, hold on, Jesus Christ. Ben! <laughs> Dude, are you on a motorcycle right now? <laughs> no, no, I just wanted to be goofy just oh, as uh, my way to hell introduce yeah. you. Can I see you? Introduce myself. Dude, I'm so glad that you're finally on the Zoom. It's like making me really happy. Really? Yeah, to meet you finally. Sure, I guess. Can I see what your shirt looks like? Oh, hell yeah, uh, dude. I know, right? <laughs> I love that shirt. I want that shirt. Um, so was that it's limited and doesn't doesn't um exist anymore, I don't well, think. Well if I could just get a venom tie dye shirt, that would be enough. Sure. <laughs> hey Man, I must Hey Hey, don't show don't show social dominance over me by blowing your bubbles so <laughs> blase and 
<laughs> apathetically. Oh my god. <laughs> Don't you dare fucking dominate me, brah. <laughs> hey man, I'm showing my dominance. <laughs> um so okay. For a second, I thought you were going to say something about my background. Yeah, yeah. I totally yeah. forgot I had. Yeah, I don't even know what it is. What is it? It's it's a, it's a star, actually, with red and black to oh, it. Oh, I see, I see. Cool. Uh, Anyways, so yeah. Did you, did you say in the Discord that you used to um, be into red pill stuff? Oh yeah, definitely. Can we talk about that? You like, know? tell me your experience. Tell me your whole path. That is something that I would use as an explanation for my radicalization in a yeah. you know political sense. You know. Yeah. So yeah, there was a sense where it's like, I mean, to make the whole story short, it's like. Back in middle school, you know, I live in California like you do and pretty liberal, liberal spot and such, you know. So, you know, I got, you know, taught some of the, you know, same kind of talking points. And then at one point, I, I then got like fed conservative, t conservative talking points on, you know, my social media mm -hmm. in a way to like, you know, just to see the other side. And then I was like, oh, these don't seem so bad. Yeah. So then it got to and then, so then fast forward, and then I would then, yeah, probably 2020 was the year I really got into like red pill stuff. And, yeah. you know, I have a red pill book. Woo! Probably, what is it? I can't really see. The Unplugged? It's called The Unplugged Alpha, the no bullshit guide to winning with women in life. Nice. Um, so, and like, I haven't read it oh, you in didn't a while. Read it. Oh, no. I would I mean, say, I, read it. I would say that like conservative talking like conservatives are super good at marketing like they know how to say things in a way that get you like lit up that make you go oh oh shit and like make you feel um self-righteous make you feel like the other side is so evil and hates you and wants the worst for you and they're very very good at us and them type of stuff um and i understand how easy it is to fall into um red pill stuff and like super conservative type of stuff oh yeah definitely and um where i actually have another book on like kind of that point that you just made mm -hmm. here it is i'm gonna see i'm gonna see first if i can take off this um background i can't remember how um i mean you look good <laughs> Yeah, but it's kind of annoying. Oh yeah, because you can't really, you can't really tell. So, anyways. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Because you, because you mentioned us versus them. Yeah. I have this book. Holy shit! Oh my god! Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> we just we just did it. Uh yeah. So can yeah, you tell me? Was... Can you tell me more of your process? So you know, how did you get out of it? Like where, where did you, what was your experience with red pill and dating and relationships? And, and, you know, tell me if you had any positive experiences, if you have any negative experiences, I'd love to hear everything. Well, in terms of relationships, I actually recently just got out of one about, about a few weeks, like a few weeks ago. Uh -huh. And it had, I didn't really use anything that red pill does. This is like, when I was already out of it, you yeah, know? Yeah. So yeah, not, 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 it was a good, it was a mixed bag with the relationship, you know? And so yeah. with, um, my, for, for, I already forgot what you, like some of the things you said. Can so, you okay. Them? Let's, let's, let's walk through it. So like you got into, you said like you were just interested in seeing what the other side was talking about. And it seemed like, it seemed like it wasn't bad stuff. And it was likely like we established like very good marketing to say the us versus them type of stuff. And so you got into red pill and what was that like that experience? Well, it's kind of like what, you know, they usually mention is that I like, Oh, I just learned this new th thing yeah. that like, I feel like no one knows about. Yeah. I'm like, genius you know <laughs> yeah and that's the other funny thing is like it makes you feel like you're entering into a world where nobody but it's like i read it and i go like this is really basic 
like <laughs> and yeah, like not and, and and not really um well researched to make such really big claims like uh women want to be objectified by alpha males like that's a super big claim and to not back that up with anything is it's bad um that doesn't need to be backed up by anything that's just him basically saying he's sexist you know yeah but like i was assuming that he was going to really drop some like proof some like citing things and you know backing up all of these really huge things that he was saying um but it really just ended up being like he just ripped off the mystery method and then just you know yeah. added a little bit of his own special sauce so anyway you were reading it were you uh were you uh meeting women while you were into the red pill stuff not really i mean like this is most, this is probably around the time when I first started going into college. And there was at one point, like I was kind of hanging out with my friends. Like, I think there was like two, one of them, a guy and a girl. And then there's another woman who kind of ha who had that like thing of like, she was interested in me, but I really wasn't, you know, it's uh -huh. like, eh. and she asked, she had to ask me, Are you, do you consider yourself a feminist? And at that time I said, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is like, I look back and I'm like, holy shit, how did I get myself to think I'm not a feminist? Yeah. You know? <laughs> um, how, what did you feel about women while you were into the red pill stuff? I don't. I don't really remember. I think it was, there was also like, in terms, you know, like when you mentioned earlier how I got out of it, there was a part of me where I'm kind of like, this seems off, you know? Yeah. What was <laughs> it though? What, like, it, what was that impetus that made you realize that? I think a lot of it has, like, what you said earlier about, like, all the claims that they'll make mm. about women. Huh. You know? And then you were just like, man, there's just like, there's way too much of these claims without any back backed up evidence. Is that well? Is that because yeah? Because so then the total process of being de radicalized mm -hmm. from my conservative perspective is actually re looking back at the other side of perspectives, the left wing perspective, you know, mm -hmm. left wing perspectives, yeah. you know. Yeah. And so then I can't like I remember, like as that other book I mentioned, how how fascism works. I was watching a video of someone um, analyzing Trump's speech mm -hmm. and how, and there was like a checklist of all like ha characteristics of fascism. And he was like clicking, Trump was Damn. clicking all the boxes. Yeah. And I was like, ah, that's when, that's pretty, that was like the moment I got out of it. Interesting. You know? Okay. So it was, it was like, um, it was when you kind of like expanded your, <clears throat> Uh, your view even to like a political level is when you were started going damn like this is this is getting dark man yeah definitely I mean with um, like online like political discourse just about anything can be woven into the discussion you know mm -hmm. so like doing yeah so like relationships can get brought up in like politics you know hmm I mean, because it's like one of the like famous con conservative pod, um, no, quote unquote news journalists who has made mm -hmm. videos about how like it's just like victimizing men, you know, in a way like mm -hmm. these dating apps are for women. They mm -hmm. disadvantage men, mm. you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, or like men are just so single and because of feminism and it's everybody else but me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Mm. And so then, and, yeah. and then what, um, what, like, did you just stop getting into red pill stuff? Like you just decided, oh, I'm going to stop reading, watching videos on this. Yeah, pretty much. Although I, I believe I'm still subscribed to fresh and fit mainly yeah. because at the time, I don't know if you remember, like with like the big scandal with another YouTuber that they were yep. beefing with. Uh-huh. One of them, they wanted to, yeah, I've been preached. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I was like, it seemed like they were going to go on their downfall. So I just wanted to be subscribed to them to be to see their downfall. Yeah. And they haven't. And looks like I'm not even subscribed to them. So mm. if you do. <laughs> hmm. um, now, so did you kind of like take a total 180 with all of that stuff? Like, oh, yeah. Where, where are your beliefs now? Like politically? Yeah, but like, let, like let's 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 focus on it in terms dating. of dating. I would say it's kind of like more like you, you know, where it's more like, um, hmm, um, you know, I would also, I mean, I would say like women are people, you know. Yeah. Don't treat them like they're this special thing. They're yeah. people. Yeah, they're people <laughs> just like us. That yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean like. It's a little difficult to try and generalize with every kind of woman. They like this and that. Yeah. I mean, like, one of you know one of the things they mention a lot is that like, women like want like, a man with like a lot of money and like mm -hmm. the past relationship that I was in, she told she told me that like, I don't really want you for your money. I see rich people, yeah. rich guys all the time. Yeah. And what won my heart was your kindness. Yes, okay. exactly. Aww. There you go, buddy. And do you, but but like for for me, if I hear somebody say something like women want this, then I need to see that in every single case. Don't go, "Oh, well, that's because she's nice." And like women are most women are nice, but she's nice, so like uh that doesn't apply to her. You know, like that's not, I don't, I, I can't believe that shit. If you're going to say women want men for their money, sh I need to have every single woman in the world agree with that and date women for the date men for their money. Um, but that's just not. The yeah. Truth. It's funny. Like I, I just remember with, with this, with this book, right. Mm -hmm. There's a bit where it talks about like, you know, pair bonding. You, you know what that is. I'm sure. What is it called? Pair, pair bonding. No, what is that pair bonding? That's essentially the idea of like how kind of like how men and women can like be um like I guess like um connected to each other in a sense. But a lot of time red pillars usually use that as in like a way to excuse women for like having sex a lot, you know, cuz it's like oh, they're not really going to be with you, you know, cuz they've been screwing around you know it's like that whole old thing of like if a woman sleeps a lot of women she's worthless or mm -hmm. has no value anymore yeah. her virginity is gone yeah. you know which is like and in this book it actually cites a study and i looked it up and i have this like um extension on my website to see like what kind of political leaning it has mm -hmm. and see if how like factual it used on the site and with and the site that i went on it was a right-leaning site with like mixed factuality mm. interesting <laughs> so i was instantly so i was instantly like boom that's that's it done hmm. that's just he just took a study mostly to prove his point any set like any study you know yeah i mean cherry picking um but also yes misinterpreting i think is a big thing because it's like uh data shows that women like bad guys there is so that is so there's so much that could contribute to that study. So, 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 so much. What is a bad guy? What is it about bad guy that you're attracted to? Like, what does a bad guy mean? Like, there's ugh, there's so much. Also, how were these people, um, how were these people polled? How were they asked what? A bad guy is like i want to know i want to know what type of people they were i want to know what age i want to know what year i want to know all of these things because all of that will tie into this um oh yeah certainly reading a study is a difficult kind of thing to do it's just so easy just to go for like the conclusion and like read yeah. the abstract you know exactly <laughs> yes reading the abstract and even the abstract is like not very conclusive but um the other thing is like about reading this book, he was so good at doing an either or type of thing where it's like, well, uh, like a black and whiteness. He, he, he was saying things like, um, women don't want to be idealized. 
So they want to be objectified. It's like, would you agree? Ben, would you agree that women don't want to be idealized? Would you agree? Maybe needy, needy women, you know? <laughs> so if you, you would know? agree that women don't want to be idealized, would you also agree that they would probably prefer to be objectified over being Hell idealized? No. So that's, like that, that's, basic, no, that's something they women basically, are like, yeah. to, you know, basically what he's doing is he's trying to make you do an either or, well, they don't like being idealized. So objectify them because that's the answer. Well, wait a second. Why either? Why, why can't there be a third option? Uh, he's he was very very good at that type of shit. Uh, what would you think be a third option though? Just like treat uh, him like a human? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. There you go. <laughs> Damn it! I, I answered my own question. Yeah, you're very good at this too, <laughs> um, dude. You're cool. See, I'm so glad. I love meeting you guys because it's like shit. You guys are all so fucking cool. Um, Thank you. I think I mean this is this is also my chance to be more social. I guess you know because I'm not yeah. very social. And I'm an introvert. I um, went to a bookstore today for, that I haven't gone to in a while. That, um, and I was kind of you know practicing like you what you uh, had in your lesson skill skill share on meditative mingling. Oh you know? hell yeah! Except I think I took it too quickly, you know. It's and it's like I was slow. in the books. Yeah, I took it in the bookstore. I went to the bookstore. I did a lot of looking around. Then when it came to you know, going up to the registry, I got a bit nervous because I also had like a pre-planned thing to talk about because the books I went to mm -hmm. is, uh, they recently unionized in like the past two years, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and I was thinking, oh, I want to like kind of talk to them about that. It's just really, it's really cool. And like, I would like to unionize my work workplace, you know? Yeah. That was, um, probably not a good thing to, to, to talk about out loud on a video. <laughs> Jesus. Well, listen, I I actually don't think that having some things planned is the worst thing in the world for certain people. Um, and that's just because some people like to think 10 steps ahead and it's that just makes them feel more comfortable. So to have a couple things that they could have ready is okay. But generally it shouldn't be the thing that is happening all the time because then you're going to be thinking too much and you're not going to be focused enough on how that person's feeling because really what's more important is how you react to that person rather than what you say. And if you do uh, come to people with planned topics, uh, you are telling yourself that you are performing for them. You are attracting them, which is a bad headspace. It's going to make you feel insecure, anxious, um, it's better to just see them as a human and um, and feel comfortable enough to know and, and to know that they are going to be happy with you just coming to them with nothing and just ha being present in the moment and being purposeful. Um, but yeah, this is that that this is a topic that we could talk about for hours and hours. But in a nutshell, that's uh, that's that. I mean, sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I was kind of surprised that you um, haven't got, you know, like in the discord, I sent a video of someone debunking the red pill or the manosphere and really? stuff. And like, yeah, that was me. Wait, let me, <laughs> let me check. I don't even remember seeing that. When you, did you even respond. I was like, you're like, yeah, cool. I'll see it. Like this past, it was this past Thursday too, but then something came up for you. Oh, let me, let me go look at it. I'm opening discord right now. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you where do you live by the way? You want, like do you want to say like the city or like Well, you could just say the state. Doesn't matter. I live in California like do you, you do. Nice. Are you in SoCal? Uh more um north. Got it. Like kind of in the like in the middle, you know. Got I live it. by San Francisco. Oh, nice. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, dude, thank you so much for reminding me about this because I really do want to watch this. This video is sponsored it's just, by... It's yeah. just that it's two hours long. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. I, I think I also suggested to like put a playback speed on it 
you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I could probably do that. But, uh, th yeah, this is definitely something I could do while I'm like cleaning my house, you know? Um, right, right, right. <laughs> so, Oh, wait a second. Somebody else, people have been like, there has with every big movement, there's always a counter movement. And so I'm seeing a Ooh. lot of people start to really counter the red pill stuff. Is that a sword? That you have what is that no this is a stick it's a walking stick oh nice do you use it oh yeah sometimes hell yeah I, but i am i am surrounded by swords actually so. <laughs> <laughs> wait yeah. wait really you have swords around you yeah i live with my i live with my grandparents and so they have a lot of like stuff that they have gotten while they have traveled around the world and stuff you know mm -hmm. that's so, fucking yeah. badass yeah so yeah, I mean, it's interesting because in in this video, she suggests that like she's all, also like a left leaning political person, mm -hmm. and so she's mentioned about like how even though you know there's this counter team of people debunking red pill and stuff, mm -hmm. the alternative is kind of like not really there. This video, you know? what? Like, do you... Where do people go? Wait, wait. What do you mean by that? The alternative is there's not people there. Well, as in, like, so there's the red pills, red pill people who have their dating advice. Yeah. And then people will be like, this is trash. Mm -hmm. But then, but then, and then people, the, the viewer will be like, okay, so then what, what should I go to instead? Got it. Yes. That's so true. It, it just, it really does. It's true that all of the dating advice out there, or most of it, is very like alt right manipulative conservative shit and there's really no that's why i'm trying to <laughs> that's what i'm trying to do man i'm trying to be the answer yeah i i found you when you were um reacting to a uh, hassan piker's um dating advice you know mm. and i was i've been waiting so long just to see you actually interview him he's he's reacted to your video by the way i know i saw it uh i don't think i watched I just like all of it but uh it seemed like I it seemed like I pwned him in the live stream. Is that correct? Uh, he 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 took some misinterpretations of I know what you said in a sort of but <laughs> yeah I know I I love Hassan I think he's great like I I I really wanted so badly for Fresh and Fit to go up with Ethan and Hassan on the um do you watch that show the Hassan and Ethan um. Uh, podcast? leftovers uh, yeah, podcast? Sometimes. yeah sometimes because they were they were going to get fresh and fit to debate with them but it, mm. they just they pulled out uh fresh and fit were too scared to do it but um, i know that that's a that's a that's a fun, that's always a fun thing about how like yeah. athletes will say they're tough and stuff and they can like i don't know fight yeah, anyone yep. and then I they get it. challenged and then they just back out <laughs> yeah yeah i mean i feel like Fresh and fit out of all of them are th the biggest fakes. And I think everybody, if it, even red pill people acknowledge that. Um, yeah. But, but yes, Hassan's great. I think he's great. Um, I, he, that video that he filmed was from a few years ago. I am sure that mm -hmm. his beliefs has, have, have shifted since then. And I was nitpicking, um, but I do nitpick because words are everything to me. And if if he's you like saying, listen to every word attentively. What'd you say? You like listen to every word attentively. Yeah, because like for instance, just even using the word game for something, it's like immediately I get it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Like, like at first you act confused though. Game's like, just a game? phrase. Yeah, game's just it a is. phrase. But like we all know what the fucking implication of the word is. And so when you are using a word, that's like, you know, that's like me. If I called, if I called social skills and dating, if I called it like murder, be like, Oh, you're taking it out of context. Murder is just the, it was just a word. Don't really murder. <laughs> like, dude, come on. You're literally calling it game and being a player. Um, Anyway, I mean, yeah, that that that's stuff, you yeah. know, so gets said around like yeah. my my workplace, you know, one guy always just like kind of talks about like 
advice with women and stuff and it's pretty red pilly stuff so yeah yeah but it's also like there's a for for young men they're coming into a place where um they're expected to be a man they're pressured to be masculine they're coming from kids you know where they didn't have masculinity and now they're in a place where they're expected to be more masculine and so they want to they want to follow through with that it they don't want to feel not manly um and so that's why a lot of young men do fall into this stuff um but it's funny because as soon as people turn like 30 or something all of this stuff really does go away it really starts floating away because they realize wait a second like this isn't really how it works it's just that i uh i was pressured by my peers um but anyway going back to um hassan like yeah he was just saying he was saying generally good stuff like i you know like i said in the video it's just that some of his phrasing and some of his like headspaces on things were a little off and i was happy to correct him and um mm -hmm. but the funny thing is is i think the reason why the chat was like agreeing with me a lot was because his his philosophy and perspective today i think is different than it was whenever he recorded that which was like whatever five years ago or something like that and so like in a way it was a little unfair for me to react to things that he he doesn't he might not agree with today i don't know that though i mean who knows but you know i know i know he has a good heart and i know he has good intentions so and i also think he's 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 dope i co yeah i mean like like the thing, the way to like see that is I like watch more of his uh, more recent uh, videos of like Chad Vices and stuff, you know, because mm -hmm. that's what that's kind of his thing, you know, is giving relationship advice, but putting Chad in for yeah, yeah, yeah. advice. <laughs> I, I get it. <laughs> Which uh, I fucking I love, you know. <laughs> I'd like to watch and, um, more of his Chad Vices, recent ones, I mean, new like, ones. I mean, like he, uh, yeah, I mean, like. I think the most recent one was a live stream, so it would be a little too difficult to do because it's probably like hours long, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, if you are ever watching and you notice one of his re new Chad Vices, please like timestamp and send it to me because I'd love to react to it on here. I'll try and I'll try and watch through the, the one of those live that live stream. <laughs> um, I'm gonna check out the chat right now because. Some people are talking. Hold on. One second. I'm sure they are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to look too. All right. So what do we Daniel got? Daniel says I'm cool. <laughs> yeah, dude. Uh, well, uh, well, hold on. She says show us the swords. I'll show you one. Yeah, show us the swords, please. We want to see the swords. We must see the swords. All right, so here's here's one of them. Ooh, baby. Oh, they're not even sheathed. <laughs> are is that are they this sheathed? One, this one isn't in particular. Ooh, this is, you know. Baby. <laughs> That's badass. Yeah, I think this this one might have been from when they were in Africa or maybe Indonesia or Singapore, mm. you know. I wonder. I wonder what year. Hold on. Sorry. What? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I just got correction. Correction that this is from Indonesia. <laughs> ah, I love it. Well, do they know the year? I want to know the year. Oh gosh. Hold on. Let me go check then. <laughs> wait. No. No. Wait. Oh, wait, whatever. All right, so I want to read the chat. Uh, Vera says, when I was into red pill, black pill, I didn't treat women every different, but it did make me hopeless on ever being in a relationship. I still feel hopeless today. Uh, Varys, I want to make you feel not hopeless, but also like I don't want you to, I don't want you to be so like focused on having to be in a relationship. It's not necessary for you to be happy or fulfilled in your life. Um, it's just like a nice addition to your life this is a dating coach telling you that so believe me please 
Um, Uh, Fenric says, there's definitely much more men on dating apps in my country, which is why we have to go the extra mile when trying to match. You know, the thing about dating apps is like, we're looking at it simplistically going, oh, men have it harder because there's more men on dating apps and they are the ones that have to message the women. And that's true, but that doesn't mean that women enjoy hey, or have it about, easy with dating apps. Sorry okay. about that. What's the year? <laughs> Um, this is this is okay. First off, this is actually from Borneo, and it's forty years old. Ooh, so that's actually pretty recent. That's like eighties, early eighties. Yeah, and this is actually like one of the, like the knives they would use when they're in the jungle. You know, like in those Damn. movies, they like cut them yes. just for debris. Yes, dude, almost like a machete. That's badass. Um, Damn there, pretty pretty skinny for a normal typical machete. <laughs> Um, so Daniela says, I have been waiting for this moment for so long, which is you, you, uh, coming on and then really, yeah. And then she says, yes, Ben is very cool. I need to see more of his hair. He may be the newest member of the flow bros. In other words, guys on here, the betas with great hair, you apparently are one of them. I agree. Really? That's, yeah. that's, that's. I love that. <laughs> yeah. Fenric, I mean, like, I, Fenric says Ben's grandparents are cool. <laughs> thank you, Fenric. I mean, I kind of kept the top hair to be kind of long because I'm very into like heavy metal and stuff. So mm. I like to, you know, like, you know, head bang along and do some yes, windmill dude. head, windmill head banging, you know? <laughs> Hell yes. Very nice. <laughs> do you like Dillinger escape plan? I have not listen to them okay uh, so um uh, i've heard of them of course listen to there's only one album i want you to listen to because i was a big fan of mike Patton growing up listen to the dillinger escape plan ep with mike Patton. um he was my pet yeah mike Patton, dillinger escape plan they have an ep or some sort of album that thing fucking rocks my dude is it irony is a dead yes. scene? Yep, irony is a dead scene. Oh yeah, I've heard it. Oh yeah, I've heard of them. Yeah. The metal core. I was I while I was going to a bookstore by the way, I was listening to System of a Down. Oh nice. Yeah, what? Toxicity the Toxicity album, you know. That's so funny. Sandra literally, Sandra in the chat literally just goes team system of a down. <laughs> That's I cool. mean, I forgot, I like forgotten how heavy that they were actually, you know? Yeah, that's true. Um, just because they're so fun too. You, they you also, forget they that they're heavy. Really fun. Like they just, uh, they're kind of like red hot chili peppers, but for heavy metal, in that they <laughs> say true. some... That's a good way to say it. And that in that that they just like say stuff that's just so random. <laughs> yes. Ty says Ty says System of Down is all time great. Don't at me. <laughs> okay. Sure. <laughs> well, I will I mean, at I, I will agree. at you positively. Right, don't disagree. Ty. Ty, I will at you positively. Yas <laughs> Hanti. There. Nice. All right, cool. We've been streaming for about two hours. Y'all y'all are sports. We had to fucking go through that that book. Boy, yeah, I was boy. I was almost gonna like I I also intended to like come on here to read my book, you know? Oh damn. Because like just maybe just a little just a little bit because Yeah. You know, so, obviously you I didn't know you were gonna read that book. <laughs> okay, so and let's then do get this. So pummeled. So let's do this. First, before you go into that, what did you think mm -hmm. of what I had read? I mean, it's like pretty typical red pill stuff. So, yeah. You know, even though I yeah. haven't. I'm actually surprised. It's less red pill than I thought. Like, it's pretty blue pill. The whole, you know, cater to how a person's personality and status and things are and, and do things that they will like. That's like, isn't that the opposite of what... <laughs> They think red pill is, which is dominate. Anyway, so it's not the only thing, but yeah, yeah. 
Okay, so would you open the book to a random page, put your finger on a random sentence and just read it? I'd like to, I think that'd be a fun game. Uh, boom. Um, uh, it's a red flag that he has in the book. Okay. It's red flag number 12, single mothers. <laughs> No. Okay. Well, what is the explanation? It's it, it straight up says, "Don't be a cuck." Don't I would do I would literally thought he was going to child. Say yeah. <laughs> There's absolutely nothing in it for you as a man. You do not pass on your own DNA. They do not have your last name, and cuckoo tree shackles you with 100% of responsibility as a parent, but it has zero authority. <laughs> See, yeah, this is all very power based stuff, like. It's so, so interesting that all of this dating and alpha stuff, in, like um, they bring power into all of it. Don't be a cuck. Don't ha uh, date somebody with an other man's child. Like it's all power stuff. It's all feeling insignificant and needing to feel better than other people. Insecurity stuff. Um it doesn't have a lot to do with dating, right? But that's the interesting thing about red pill is like, it doesn't really have a lot to do with actually social skills as much as it does with um, trying to counter balance their insecurity and make them feel better than others. But they don't realize that you can't feel better than others by acting like you're better than others or feeling like you're better than others. That's just not how confidence works. Um, Confidence, yeah, certainly. Confidence isn't circumstantial, but apparently, with red pill, they believe that to be true. I mean, confidence certainly is like a um, I guess a necessary trait for just about anyone, not just for dating, you know, the opposite sex. I mean, it's like yeah, just be confident, well, fine, but like, it doesn't have to be. I guess singular, you know. Mhm. Mm and and I actually I'm so excited to put out the uh my book and I am going to call it God Pill. I've decided. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you like that? I did. Yes, dude. <laughs> it's funny and it fits. Um Yes. When when is it coming out? I well, I want to buy it. It's it, the writing is done. Now it's mm -hmm. just formatting putting it up for sale, marketing it, recording it as an audiobook and a video. And so like that's all going to be this week. And then hopefully I could get it ready by next week, like late late next week I'd like to. But man, writing books sucks. <laughs> it's really like hard. as in it'll be ready to be bought next week. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, nice, nice. H hold me to it. <laughs> I shall. Because Wait, it's I got hard. My yeah. I got my grandpa who wants to show me one of the other daggers or knives that he has. So I oh, guess we can end it here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's great. All right. Awesome. Uh, ben, it was awesome meeting you, my dude. Um, thank, thank you. And thank you for being a member. Um, mm -hmm. I really appreciate you. Welcome. I appreciate all my members, Daniela, Kat. We got Raul here. Man, dude, you guys are awesome. I'm just so appreciative of y'all. Um, and I will see y'all soon, maybe Thursday, maybe not. I might have something happening on Thursday. Um, but speaking of which you said last week that something came out. Are you comfortable like saying what it was? No, I can't. I, it's like, okay. a it was a family thing, but, um, okay. That makes, yeah. sure, that makes sense. Yeah. All right. See ya. Bye. All right. Great meeting you, buddy. Bye-bye. And to all of you. All of you, my betas, my lovely, lovely, lovely betas. Um, I'm just really appreciative of y'all. I'm glad everybody came. Uh, I'm sorry to sicken you with just like really toxic shit today, but I thought it would be fun. But personally, actually for me, I genuinely wanted to read the book. I wanted to have, I wanted to research it. So I would be better able to respond to people's red pill talking points. But now I'm finding red pill is just dumb shit. There's really nothing to it. 
there's no depth whatsoever. There's no backup. It's just bias and really conservative, like women hating stuff for no reason whatsoever, except for that they feel bad about themselves. Um, Shane says, I just got the, you're a great guy, but I don't see this going long term speech from a woman I liked. That does suck, dude. I'm really sorry about that. Um, but that's going to happen in dating in general. Everybody's going to get that. Women get that. Non-binary people get that. Trans people get that. Straight people get that. Men get that. Everybody gets that. Um, that's dating. Um, Shane, if you want, you can, you know, ask her what, what it is and, um, let her know, like, listen, I won't get mad. It's just going to help me for the next person that I meet. But, um, it's not very necessary, um, because, but there is a small chance that there might be something you're doing that, you know, is upsetting her, making her not interested. Um, but it also could just be that she just doesn't like you. And that's fine. That's how dating works. Tons of people don't like me. Tons of women don't like me. Uh, it's being good with relationships is not about trying to make people like you trying to get as many people like you that's not the point the point of relationships is just being good at being able to find people that like you and you like back if you're really really good at that then you're good at dating and then you create the illusion that you're good with everybody because you're only spending time with people that like you but you're just really good at finding the people that like you Daniela says, I know we're about to end, but was this one of the two women you were seeing? Shane, if you're on Discord, we can continue the convo there. Yeah, that's a good idea, Daniela, um, to continue that convo in the Discord. And yeah, I, I forgot to mention Shane. Thank you for being a member, buddy. I got to check. I want to see how many members we have so far. I'm going to look. Um, yeah. Yeah. So book coming out, hopefully by the end of next week. Um, and it is the answer to red pill, the God pill. And I'm going to God pill everybody. I'm just going to God pill you left, right. Okay. All right. Well, I'm pretty sure we could do Thursday. Um, but we'll see. There there may be a lot of stuff that I have to do on Thursday. But we'll see if we could fit it in for an hour. Like, come on. All right. Guys, I'm just... I had fun today, as always. Love hanging out with y'all. Um, Daniela in the Discord. By the way, if you become a member, you get the Discord. You could hang out with us and chat with us there. Daniela, actually, I'm not going to say what Daniela says, because if you're not a member, well, you can't know. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Sorry. How are you guys still watching me just like talk bullshit right now? All right. <laughs> I'm going to go. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.